As hurricanes devastate Florida's coast, Advent Health takes action to help victims and restore hope. Adventist Solidarity Project reaches indigenous in the mountainous regions of the Philippines with education, health, and the gospel. Prison Ministries in Puerto Rico connects with inmates. Convention in Malaysia mobilizes hundreds of master guides to strengthen youth ministries across the Asia Pacific region. Adventist Mission transforms isolated community in the Amazon rainforest of Brazil. Coming up next, these stories and others here on ANN. The Master Guides Convention in Malaysia gathered 750 leaders dedicated to strengthening youth ministries across the Southern Asia Pacific region. Under the theme, Rebuild the Altar, this event featured moments of reconnection with God and practical training focused on discipleship and Christian service. Participants were equipped to lead and support their peers, fostering spiritual growth and a commitment to the mission of spreading the gospel. Greetings from the Malaysia Union Mission Adventist Youth Ministries. We are really happy to be able to present to you this wonderful report on our Pathfinders and also Master Guide. Now we pride ourselves on the active participant of the Master Guides and also the Pathfinder here in Malaysia. The reason why is because it is due to the hard work of our predecessors who have actually worked very hard in training and dedicating their time and making sure that our young people are well prepared to become servants of the Lord. Since the establishment of the Malaysia Union Mission, we have conducted various activities for the Pathfinders and Master Guide. We continuously conduct trainings to help our master guides to be well acquainted with the current curriculum, which is actually the club ministry training, as well as also conducting few events like small Pathfinder camperies in each of the local churches. And the reason why we are doing this is because we want to reach out to as many local people around those churches that will be interested to join Pathfinders. So during World Pathfinder Day, our local churches will go out and do community services as well as also conducting services in their local churches. Our very first Pathfinder Campery, which was attended by almost close to 2,000, even not more than 2,000 participants, who were registered and even some who actually just walked in. Now we accommodated everyone, we had challenges, but then praise the Lord, all events and everybody was actually enjoying was themselves during the particular event. So let me just show you a little bit of highlights from the video that will be presented right after this. 14 regions from the Sabah Mission, one contingent from the Sarawak Mission, and one contingent from the Peninsula Malaysian Mission participated in the parade. Receiving the March Pass salute were the VIPs, church leaders, and guests who were dressed in their Master Guide A1 uniform. One hundred and twenty-three Master Guides in training from Sabah and Sarawak Mission were invested as Master Guides in an investiture ceremony. The Pathfinders, MITs and Master Guide proudly don their uniforms during this formal occasion during the Camp Marie. SSD Pathfinder Coordinator Pastor Anukul Richo, the honored guest, was among the leaders who invested the MITs into Master Guides and later presented awards to the selected and notable individuals. Among the awards presented were the Good Conduct Ribbon, the Long Service Award, Bronze Wings, 
the Meritorious Service Award, Silver Wings, and the Distinguished Service Award, Gold Wings. A total of 221 participants received these awards. As a result, these committed and inspired master guides are now ready to lead new generations to become disciples of Christ and to make a significant impact on the world with the message of His love. Imagine facing two devastating hurricanes just weeks apart. That's exactly what Advent Health went through. First came Hurricane Helene, leaving destruction behind. Then before recovery efforts were even complete, Hurricane Milton struck. But through the chaos, something extraordinary happened. Described as something as a once in a century storm. And the preparation, the selfless service, what I have seen in terms of people stepping up in ways that was not in their job description, but simply was a expression of their heart and expression of themselves. That will be my memory of Milton. With 30 hospitals and more than 70,000 team members across Florida, Advent Health sprang into action. As Hurricane Milton grew into a powerful Category 5 storm, staff worked tirelessly to keep hospitals running. Inside, teams were performing surgeries, delivering babies, and making sure that patient care didn't stop. It brought out the best of the human spirit. It brought out the best of individuals across Advent Health to put down their own selfish interest and to serve others. And that will be my memory of Milton. Even after the storms passed, Advent Health's efforts continued. They helped raise over $500,000 for hurricane relief and offered free virtual medical visits to assist those impacted by the disaster. What I have seen in terms of people stepping up in ways that was not in their job description, but simply was a expression of their heart and expression of themselves. When a crisis strikes, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. These storms showed us how compassion and service can light the way. In the darkest moments, hope shines the brightest. In the heart of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil, volunteers from the Seventh-day Adventist Church are transforming the lives of Riverside residents and bringing hope to a community facing numerous challenges in one of the most remote areas of the country. On the banks of the Rio Cuyeras, deep within the Amazon, lies Nova Cania, a riverside settlement with around 40 families. Located approximately 10 hours from Manaus and only accessible by boat, the community faces the isolation of the forest and a lack of basic services, making daily life challenging both for those who live there and those who choose to serve. Since July 2023, volunteers from the east and north regions of Sao Paulo, in partnership with the Northwest Missions Institute, have been bringing not only faith, but also practical support to the residents. The construction of a mission house and a center of influence provides a place of shelter for missionaries and a space for spiritual and social gatherings. Adventist church leaders emphasize that the goal is more than just building physical structures. It is about building lives and leaving a legacy of faith and hope in anticipation of Jesus' return for a community over 3,000 kilometers away from where the volunteers live. During the first week of evangelism, 13 people were baptized, including eight on a single Saturday, while another 16 continue studying the Bible. With the missionary's support, the community has also begun constructing a community restaurant to generate income. Village leaders express their gratitude, highlighting that the Adventist Church's actions have provided much needed relief, addressing many of the difficulties they faced thanks to the volunteers' efforts. Pastors emphasize that the mission is not limited to construction, but represents the strength of the gospel even in the depths of the forest. A mission that overcomes the barriers of isolation, bringing hope to the riverbanks and the heart of the forest. May more volunteers be inspired to bring faith to the most remote places as Jesus commissioned us, go and make disciples of every tribe, language, and people. In this episode of a and Profiles, host Alyssa Truman interviews Billy Biaggi, General Vice President of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Together, they delve into his inspiring journey of faith, leadership, and dedication to global mission work. 
Biagi also provides insight into his role within the Adventist organization. What is the job of a general vice president? Well, we have different responsibilities and assignments, uh, like supervisor of communication, also publishing ministry, and Christian stewardship. And also we are chairing some boards, like uh, in my case, uh, Adventist World Radio Board, Chair, and then Hope Channel International Board, Chair, and uh, many other committees. I have a question. So twice now during a GC session, you've had calls that yes. change, change the direction where you thought maybe your life was going to be, yes. you know? What is it like <coughs> to receive those calls during a session? It's, it's very rewarding. It's, it's, uh, we are humbled. You know, for the general conference in session and the nominating committee to 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 bring a call to you is is a humbling situation, but it's very rewarding because, as I told you, since we graduate, we say, "Lord, I am answering your call." So the Lord knows already that we will accept whatever call will come, and with my wife, we said we don't need a, a, a high position or authority uh, position we will go humbly wherever he will take us because he knows what is the best for us as a family and for the mission of the church. So it's not the position. Uh, so in one hand, is very humbling situation. In the other hand, is what a privilege to serve the Lord. Hmm. I traveled with you once down in Brazil for about 10 days, I think it was. Um and the one thing that I took away, which I now incorporate into much of what I do, is your love for 8.1 billion yes. people. You're the one person who I hear. You keep up with it because it was 8 billion last I knew. Now we're at 1.1. We one, talked right? about 7 and a half or 7.3, I don't remember, in 15. So so you, you keep track of this. <clears throat> yes. Why? Because for each one of them, Christ gave his life in the cross of Calvary. Therefore, for heaven, each one is important, should be for us as well. For the full episode and other videos delving deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist faith and its story, visit our official channel on YouTube. In the remote mountains of Mindanao, Sulads, a nonprofit organization, began its journey to uplift indigenous peoples through education and community development. Today, we explore how a shared vision and early sacrifices laid the foundation for an initiative that continues to empower and transform lives across the Philippines. In the heart of Mindanao, amidst its breathtaking landscapes and diverse cultures, lies a story of hope, transformation, and unwavering commitment. This is the story of Sulads. Founded over 60 years ago, Sulads, or Socioeconomic Uplift, Literacy, Anthropological, and Developmental Services, began with a dream by two leaders whose vision is to uplift the lives of indigenous tribes in the Philippines. The beginning of the Sulad's work is similar to what we call the Peter and Cornelius experience in Acts chapter 10. Peter received a vision and Cornelius was given a vision. So there were two parties who were given the same vision related to what work was going to start. The characters involved is Dato, Tibalawan, and Sumbog of Dampaan. That is a remote place in central Bukidnon, up there in the hinterlands, the Manubo chieftain. And Mr. Napoleon Saguan Sr., the supervisor of the Garden of Mountain View College a few years, uh, some years ago. Both of them received visions that they have to see each other. They have to meet somewhere in Valencia. And they both came into the same place, and when they saw each other, they recognized immediately that they were the very people whom they have seen each other in, in their visions, the visions or dreams. Then the matter was brought to the attention of Elder James Zachary, that there is a tribe of Manubo people in the mountains 
who are requesting to build schools to educate the children. American missionaries from Mountain View College, including Elder Zachary, Dr. Lewis, and Mr. Christensen, worked with local staff to fundraise and send student missionaries to teach about Christianity in the mountainous regions of Bukidnon, Philippines. In 1970s and 1990s, the missionary program expanded to San Fernando, Valencia, and Quezon in Bukidnon. Eight mission schools were established in these areas, including Durian, Bulalang, Dao, Balaas, Usarayan, Mahayag, Santo Domingo, and Dampaan. So I went there in 1975. So in 1975 to 1976, I was the, the missionary in, in Dampaan and Salumayag Mission School. Two, two mission schools, I, I was only one because we don't have money during the time. The financial statement was really down. Well, the challenges during the time was very physical challenges. Was, you know, they were almost naked. You had the manobos and uh, they do not know, say, health practices, no latrine, no CR, nothing. And of course, we were the one who taught them. I still remember, you know, receiving some shoes from, from America, you know, some high heels and you know, shoes, many, and some of them wear this. And you know, they walk, you know, like, <laughs> I still remember, you know, they have many sprain. So because of that shoes, so they, they throw it and they prefer to, to be, you know, uh, no shoes at all. Stay tuned for the next episode of ANN, where we'll dive deeper into how Sulads continues its work in remote communities. The Change the Story, campaign by Adra Romania, fights domestic abuse, promoting awareness, emotional support, and direct involvement to transform lives and advocate for healthy relationships. In an abusive relationship, everything may seem normal at first. But as time goes by, what seemed like an unfortunate incident, a moment of weakness, becomes habit. Verbal and physical violence becomes reality, followed by crumbs of heart feelings, flowers, and promises. The story can repeat it over and over again, or not. I choose to change the story. Adra House, when you have the courage to ask for help and break this cycle, everything changes. At Adra House, women and children find support, counseling, and feel at home again, safe to start a new story. Adra House changes the story, yours or someone else's. Active prison ministries result in transform lives in Puerto Rico. Baptisms and wedding ceremonies are bringing inmates and their relatives to God's kingdom. Eileen Lozada is a wife homeschooling mother of her three children, and an elder at the San Antonio Seventh-day Adventist Church in Caguas, Puerto Rico. She is also director of chaplaincy and prison ministries of the Adventist Church in eastern Puerto Rico. Some years ago, Lozada felt the call to visit a group of inmates in a nearby prison. Since then, Lozada has dedicated much of her time to her passion caring for the girls, as she calls them. Driven by deep love and compassion, Lozada and others regularly offer spiritual support and study the Bible with the inmates. From classrooms to prison cells, love and faith can reach anyone, anywhere. And for these inmates, it's the beginning of a whole new chapter. Babcock University, one of the largest in Nigeria, celebrated 150 years of the global mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Babcock University held a series of special events to mark 150 years of the Global Adventist Mission, including an event themed, A Journey of Faith and Commitment. The celebration featured music, vibrant colors, and community activities, highlighting the church's missionary legacy. The program included music, testimonies, Bible recitals, 
and a special Sabbath service. Pioneers and significant members of the institution were honored. Seven young preachers shared messages about missionary efforts and church history, emphasizing its spiritual and missionary legacy. During the events, a community outreach program distributed food baskets, hygiene items, and clothing, blessing widows and the elderly. Congratulations to Babcock University on celebrating 150 years of Adventist mission and for its efforts to spread the message of salvation and the soon return of Jesus. Pastor Ko Sali, along with his wife and daughter Kayla, made a move for God by relocating to Hickory, North Carolina to serve at a Hmong church plant. Supported by Adventist Refugee and Immigrant Ministries, their mission is to empower the local Hmong community and raise leaders to share the gospel. Pastor Ko Sali, his wife Terry, and their daughter Kayla are about to take a leap of faith for Jesus. They're relocating to Hickory, North Carolina to follow God's call to be involved with a Hmong church plant. Pastor Ko is a Hmong pastor originally from Thailand, and Terry coordinates Adventist Refugee and Immigrant Ministries in North America. The Adventist Refugee and Immigrant Ministries was launched in 2009 by the North American Division. Two years later, the 2011 13 Sabbath offering gave it a real jump start with church planting. It allowed a team of church planting consultants from 12 language groups to visit and encourage scattered groups of recently resettled refugee families. Our very early goal in reaching other cultures should be to find the people that God has called and empower them to reach their own people. These consultants organized groups into church plants, mentored their leaders, and connected them with local conferences. They were effective at it. They were respected. People were drawn to God as a result. They were usually church planting effectively, successfully, wherever they went. And they also felt a calling to reach their people. With the help of the Holy Spirit, the work began to grow rapidly. The number of language groups doubled. The number of refugee congregations tripled from 57 to 179. Membership quadrupled and both annual baptisms and tithe grew eightfold. Once they were organized into church plants, they soon began serving their communities. The 13th Sabbath offering enabled us to provide a little travel budget to enable them to go and plant churches in areas where there were no churches, where they had already begun reaching people. They were able to go and minister to plant churches among small groups, and then they were able to reach their communities, and the work just grew and expanded beyond what I ever would have dreamed. Pastor Ko Saley has planted three Hmong churches so far and is facilitating the planting of a fourth. When we start working with the Hmong here in the U.S., uh, it's very challenging because once we become Christian, most of the people in the family will disfellowship you. They consider you as an outcast. They disown you. And so unless we have a build, unless we build a support uh, system, it's very make it very difficult for someone to leave their, their culture, uh, their family. Pastor Ko has created a global Hmong network, creating key Hmong Adventist leaders and members from every part of the globe. These leaders take turns leading weekly worship times. As the Saley family moves to Hickory. Their dream is to establish a church in Hickory and another one in the nearby city of Charlotte. But the second goal, we want to establish a Hmong center, a training center, uh, a place where we can equip our leaders, not just uh, across the country, but we're hoping to be able to do a place uh, where we can train leaders worldwide. And so that would be our, our dream and our goal. Pastor Ko, Terry and the refugee churches across the North American division are grateful to you who through your generous 13 Sabbath offering have helped to make all this possible. Many, many churches have started because of the uh, 13 Sabbath offering. And so the work in the, among refugees now 
have gone way, way beyond what we imagined when we started in 2009. Please pray as the work among immigrants and refugees continues. Pray for the Sayle family as they plant churches in North Carolina. Let's contribute to this and other global initiatives by making a special offering for the 13th Sabbath. For more inspiring mission stories, visit AdventistMission.org. With these stories, we conclude this week's episode of ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch other amazing videos? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. Leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse four. The text says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And remember, you can always visit Advance.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.